Hello, I'm Brian Fitzgerald, the Golf Doctor, and today I'm going to look at the biggest bunker shot mistakes that I see. So a lot of people are commenting lately that they're very poor at bunkers, so uh, you know who you are, this video is actually made for you. So if this is your first time to this channel, welcome. This channel is all about helping you play better golf and lowering your golf score. And of course, one of the best ways to lower your score is to watch my videos. I keep it really simple. And if you'd like to be notified of every video as they get released, just hit the subscribe button, click on the bell notification, and you'll be notified of every video as soon as it's released. So as I said, today we're gonna to take a look at the biggest mistakes that I see people make in bunkers. And the first mistake that I see is overwhelmingly people have a very poor setup. And if the setup is poor, it's very difficult to get that ball out of the bunker. So what are the things that I see common in the setup? Well, I see people playing the ball too far forward in the stance as a first thing. Secondly, I see them having their head behind the ball and they're doing this because they think if my head's behind the ball, that's gonna help me to lift the ball out of the bunker. I'll show you in a minute that doesn't actually work. And the other problem with all that is they then compound it by having their hands forward. So they've got the ball forward, their hands forward. By having your hands forward, it actually de-lofts the club. So I've got a 60 degree sandwich here. If I have my hands forward, I've turned that into about a 52, which gives me less loft, which makes it harder to get the ball where I want it to go. The other thing that occurs is by moving my hands forward and getting forward shaft lean, it makes the leading edge of my sand wedge sharper, which means if it hits the ground, it's gonna dig in and dig a big hole. So all of those things are bad. So what I like to see is the ball just very slightly, an inch or two forward of the center, I do want the nose to be in front. I don't talk in terms of weight distribution. If I, sit, if, I, if I did, I'd say I want more weight on the front foot. But the problem is I see a lot of people doing this feeling like they've got weight on the front foot, but they've actually got weight on the back foot. So I prefer to say shirt buttons or the nose in slightly in front of the ball or at least level with the ball. So I have the ball in that position there. I have my weight forward. And my hands are just ever so slightly forward. Level is good, but we don't want to overdo that. So if we can fix that setup, it's really gonna help the rest of our swing. So the second mistake I see most people make is they don't adapt the club face to the conditions. There's a lot of uh, people say that every bunker shot you hit, you should have an open club face. I don't actually agree with that. I come from Melbourne, Australia. In Melbourne, we have very firm, hard packed sand. The worst thing I can do is to open the club face because that raises the leading edge off the sand, which means the back of the club is gonna bounce off the firm surface and belly the ball. So what I'm gonna say is if you play a course where there is a lot of sand and it's pretty thick, it's a great idea to open the club face because by opening the club face, it takes a, a, a very thin scraping of sand. You won't be digging in. If you play on a course like I do here in Melbourne where we don't have much sand and it's fairly firmly packed, you want a pretty square club face. If you're worried that by having a square club face doesn't give you enough loft, go and buy a sand wedge or a lob wedge that has more loft. That's why I use a 60. I have a pretty square club face. But if you're playing on really hard sand and you're opening the club face, that's going to be pretty much ensuring the back or the bounce of the club is gonna hit first and you're gonna lose control. It's gonna make it so much harder to get the ball out of the bunker. So the third biggest mistake that I see is that people are having the wrong swing shape. I see a lot of people trying to pick the club up very steeply in what I call a V-shaped swing. And I did make a video a few weeks ago just on keeping the angle of attack shallow during the swing. So I'll put a link up the top of the video to that video. But we wanna match that swing shape to this type of shot we're playing. Most sand situations require a shallower arc. So I prefer to picture 
my club traveling in a U-shaped swing as I hit this shot, rather than a steeper V-shaped swing. And if you can do that, it's gonna to help to meet the ball correctly with the club. It's gonna put the odds a little bit more in your favor to get the ball out of the sand. So the fourth mistake I see a lot of golfers make is in their frustration to get the ball out or their angst. They try and help lift the ball out and they fall back during the course of the downswing. It's a bit of a reverse pivot. But by me falling back, my club is going to enter the sand a long way behind where it should. So ideally, if I had a, a uh, some car keys in my hand and I was going to throw the car keys out onto the green, I wouldn't be going that way. I would be going that way. So it's a good idea to start moving correctly. So it's okay to move as long as we're moving in the right direction. So the great drill is to put a line in the sand, get the line roughly in the middle of your feet, and then when you swing, try and hit the sand. Now I fell backwards intentionally there and I'm a good six to eight inches behind that line. If I can then swing it back and move forward, now I've hit about half an inch behind the line. So that gives me a great chance of getting that ball out. So that would be a good drill to do. Put a line in the sand and just practice trying to hit it. But the, the, the best way of hitting it is to practice moving forward in the swing really really important and the last common mistake that I see is people equate this to a normal chip shot from grass where they say this is a short shot it requires a short swing so they get in the bunker and they do something like this and they use a little tiny swing I hit the ball a little bit behind and the ball just goes forward and comes back at my feet it, there's no way that ever had enough momentum to get the ball out onto the putting surface. So I much prefer people to start using a swing that is bordering on too long with a slower swing than it is to go shorter swing and faster swing. So I really look for a swing that's going shoulder height with my hands through to shoulder height with my hands. So if I can do that, it's gonna help. So we'll go through those things again. We wanna get our head at least level with the ball or slightly in front. We want the ball position to be slightly forward of center and the hands level or just ever so slightly forward. We're trying to match up the club face to the conditions, firm sand here and not much of it. I'm gonna have a relatively square club face. We're then going to try and uh, make sure that when we swing the club, we're gonna move forward in our downswing. We're not gonna move backwards. There's no shot that you wanna move backwards on. So we wanna move that forwards. And then we're gonna use a swing that is long enough to do the job, shoulder height through to shoulder height. So we'll see how I go with this one. So the ball pops out comes out and that's run out to about a foot from the hole. It's not a massive divot, it's a long divot, but it's quite shallow. And I did all of those five things. So if you can get to work on those five things, I'm pretty sure you're gonna get a lot better out of getting out of sand. Thank you for letting me help you with your golf. I'm Brian Fitzgerald, the Golf Doctor, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.